The Court of Public Opinion The People vs. Our Political Leaders By Hon. Paul Hellier Canada's Senior Privy Councillor October, 2019 I have never seen a federal election that involved such a sustained effort to buy votes with borrowed money. Of course the practice is not new, but the 2019 campaign has set an unprecedented high of irresponsibility. The result has been that the really important issues have been discussed superficially, or not at all. Ray Stone's cartoon illustrates our detachment from the real world around us. Four critically important issues. The first is the geoengineering, chemtrails, harp trio. Most Canadians are totally unaware of chemtrails. Some of the minority who are aware, think they are contrails, the water vapor from jet engines that can only be seen for a few seconds and are harmless. Chemtrails, by contrast, can often be seen as narrow ribbons that extend from one horizon to the other, and soon start to unravel and form their own clouds. They include nanoparticles of heavy metals including aluminum, barium and strontium. The particles are so small that they enter the bloodstream and go directly to the brain. In effect the US military are poisoning the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil in which we grow our food. 2. Dr. Russell L. Blalick, an internationally recognized neurosurgeon, says that the nanoparticles affect the brain and spinal cord with a growing list of neurodegenerative diseases including Alzheimer's dementia, Parkinson's disease and Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, all strongly related to exposure to environmental aluminum. And no human being, young or old, is exempt. Not only is your health in jeopardy, the cost of health care and hospital care is increased by billions of dollars. Both conservative and liberal governments have been allowing this for years without our knowledge or consent. Yet covert global climate engineering programs are the single most environmentally destructive assault the human race has ever unleashed against nature and the entire web of life, in the opinion of Dane Wigington, head of Geoengineering Watch, an opinion shared by a retired USAF general, and by me. Global warming is a global emergency. In Light at the End of the Tunnel, a survival plan for the human species that was published in 2010, I guessed that we had almost 10 years to stop the trend. This was based on the evidence of Dr. James Hansen in Storms of My Grandchildren, and other experts. Nine years have gone by and our leaders are still not taking the crisis seriously, despite the gloomy scientific predictions. Is it any wonder that the young people are striking? They are the ones who are going to suffer. In my latest book I refer to the leaders of the group of 20 nations as the 20 Naros, the Roman emperor who allegedly played his fiddle as Rome burned. Regrettably our prime minister is no exception. To promise carbon neutrality by 2050 is a cruel hoax. That is 20 to 25 years too late. Zero Point Energy in the fourth edition, 2019, of Zero Point Energy, the fuel of the future, Thomas Villone says that Nikola Tesla was the first to describe the real essence of ZPE in 1891. There has been increasing interest over the years with hundreds of experiments and numerous patents. There may be working models but one would have to check them out for efficiency. I suspect Canada would have to develop something suitable for varied uses. Valone says, our basis of survival as a species depends on such an invention as we quickly exhaust all the energy sources and pollute the atmosphere with billions of tons of CO2. To gain a perspective on our dire situation as an evolving human race, just think of any disaster where the concomitant deprivation always includes the loss of electricity. ZPE is the third wave of the Industrial Revolution. First there was the steam engine, powered by coal. Next was the internal combustion engine powered by oil or natural gas. Now there is the third and final zero-point energy engine powered by the inexhaustible energy that exists everywhere in the universe. The number of jobs created in changing to a zero-point energy economy would exceed by far the number lost from phasing out the oil economy. Canada would once again become a manufacturing country. Factories could be built in almost every province and two in Alberta. 
government created debt free money. One of the most important issues is a massive infusion of debt free money in Canada and around the globe. The world is drowning in a sea of debt, as there is actually more debt in the world than there is money. 3. We are in this financial mess because the world financial system is a total fraud. It is one gargantuan Ponzi scheme, no better than the one Bernie Madoff used to swindle his friends and neighbors, and thousands of times worse if you add up the total number of victims it has ripped off over countless generations. The principal difference between the two schemes is that Madoff was acting outside the law while the international banking cartel has persuaded generation after generation of monarchs presidents and prime ministers to provide legislative protection for their larceny. The bank's Ponzi scheme is alarmingly simple. They lend the same money to several people or institutions at the same time, and collect interest on it from each. What the banks really lend, however, is their credit, and what they take back in compensation for that privilege is a debt that must be repaid with interest. In reality, then, the banks have turned the world into one humongous pawn shop. You hawk your stocks, bonds, house, business, rich mother-in-law or country and the banks will give you a loan based on the value of the collateral. A world system where all the money is created as debt is a perpetual disaster in the making. It is like a giant balloon that the banks pump full of debt. The balloon gets larger and larger until the debt load becomes too heavy to carry and then it is like a balloon with a pin stuck in it. The system crashes and thousands or sometimes millions of innocent people lose their jobs, homes, farms and businesses. Not surprisingly, there have been 25 recessions and depressions in the United States since 1890 and not one of them was really necessary. For more, Google Canadian Bank Reformers. Similarly, Cryptocurrencies are just another way to rob the poor. Creating them should be made a criminal offense. The Canadian Precedent From 1939 until 1974 the Bank of Canada supplied the Government of Canada with large amounts of near-zero cost money. This helped finance our significant role in World War II, and after the war to build the St. Lawrence Seaway, the Trans-Canada Highway, the vast dew lines radars around the periphery of the country, and many more infrastructure projects. But in 1974 Bank of Canada Governor Gerald B. was persuaded to adopt globalism, monetarism, and abide by Bank for International Settlements rules. These included an end to cheap money for governments. We had to pay market rates of interest. So from fiscal 1974-75 to 2013-14 we had to pay $1.37 trillion in interest, all of it unnecessary. A social contract between the government and people of Canada. In March 2013, 40 concerned Canadians presented a plan to finance Minister James Flaherty called a social contract between the government and people of Canada. It was designed to reduce bank leverage from 21 to 2 1 over a seven year period, and reduce the amazing power of the international banking cartel. In a slightly more sophisticated version of the post war system, the implementation called for the creation of $150 billion a year for seven years to be divided 50 50 between the federal and provincial governments. In subsequent years, 34% of the new money created would be government created. There was not even a letter of acknowledgement. The same proposal was forwarded to the Liberal and NDP parties with the same result. 4. In view of the two old line parties being such poor stewards of people problems it appears that they are stale dated, their best before labels indicating the late 20th century. We had hoped for better. When Prime Minister Trudeau was sworn in I wrote him a congratulatory letter asking if he was content with being a good Prime Minister, or if he would be willing to think outside the box, create a monetary miracle and become one of Canada's greatest Prime Ministers. The Prime Minister could use the government created money to pay for his promises, and to finance the rapid transformation from an oil economy to a zero-point energy economy to save the planet from overheating. I also mentioned the chemtrail harp problem waiting for attention. I volunteered to help with the social contract, as I was one of a small group who really understood the problem.
no response and, worse, no action. He robbed the people of $600 billion and put us further in debt, and proposes much more of the same that our children and grandchildren will be paying interest on forever. Andrew Scheer, a social conservative who doesn't care about global warming, is equally out of touch with the Canada of the 21st century. So one of the important outcomes of the election must be that neither Liberals nor Conservatives win enough seats to freeze us in the status quo. Maxime Bernier disqualified himself when he said that the 16-year-old activist Greta Thunberg be attacked, and that she was mentally deranged. She is a hero. Others had called for action on climate change, but she brought the issue to public attention in a way that no one else has been able to do. Yves François Blanquet may be popular in Quebec, but if his goal is separation he should know that when the secret Bilderbergers tried to get Quebec to separate it was not from love of the Québécois, but to start the breakup of Canada and an amalgamation with the U.S. The French language and culture would have disappeared eventually. A strong Quebec in a strong Canada is the best solution. Personally I plan to vote for Elizabeth May because I think she is the most authentic. But I do so with a heavy heart because Elizabeth is aware of the big issues but, declines to confront them. My second choice would be Jagmeet Singh, who has grown much since he took his seat in Ottawa. Above all, we must listen to the young people who have their whole lives at stake. We must not let them down. Respectfully submitted. Honorable Paul Hellier. Canada's Senior Privy Councillor www.paulelierweb.com